Hello, I am Katrick and today I'm making this video for the Construct2 Academy. Hello, today we are seeing how to make a customized e-card. As you can see, it's pretty much a simple animation with a few elements, some snowflakes which are coming from the sky and going down, a few characters, a couple of text objects that faded in, and there is some music running into the background. Moreover, I want the e-card to be customized, so what I can do is actually add at the end of the URL a few parameters, and if all goes well, the text does display those elements. You can see that the from parameter, Skiatric, and on the main text is Merry Christmas, their C2 Academy viewers, which is the component 2. And you can see that the spaces are done through the HTML character percentage 20. Here's are coming on top, characters fade in, text fade in, and some text go up as well. And the snowflakes are going down the, the whole time. So yeah, let's see how the project was made in Construct. Here is how our project is being made. It's a single layer and a single layout. The element the most in the background is the hill. It's a sprite. You can notice that the origin point for it is in the bottom left. Nothing very noticeable about it, except perhaps for a boolean instance variable named moving, and which value is true by default. A bit closer to us, we do have the characters, which have only a fade behavior. On top of it, we do have two sprite font objects. They both have a different uh, texture in the end, as well as different values for the character width and presentation. Uh, the text for this one, for the text Mary, txt Mary, is uh, actually set in the center the horizontal alignment is set into the center, whereas the txt wishes is set to be on the right. txt wishes do have a moving boolean variable which is set to false, a bit like else, except for the value, and it doesn't have a behavior. The txt Mary does have a fade behavior. The characters do also have a timer behavior. And finally, we do have a snowflake sprite. It is composed of four frames. You can notice that the speed of the animation is set to zero. So we are using the sprite as a texture bank, pretty much. We want just to display a frame, not an animation. And so, one of the four frames each time. We do have a couple of behaviors, bullet and signy. Signy is set to horizontal, which means that the object is going to move on the horizontal axis according to a set period of time and a set magnitude, an amount of pixels. We've added an audio object to our project because we are playing some music. We do have an array that is going to be useful for us actually only in the initialization at the very beginning to make it so that the text doesn't have these big spaces. It is for us to set the character width of each character. We do have the browser object which is being used, as demonstrated, to get the parameters from the URL. And we do have a function. The music, as well as the graphics, and even the fonts, have been made using Creative Commons assets. In the event sheet, in the comments, you can see the, the URLs and where the assets 
was taken from. Now we are going to take a closer look at the event sheet to see how the project is being made. So our event sheet starts with a few comments, a note on how to customize your card, and we start our event sheet with the on start of layout events, which is directly calling a function, as you can notice, in its snowflake, which is a function right there, which will spawn actually 100 snowflakes, so the sprites we have seen, and for each of those snowflakes, which are placed randomly on the X position and which are put randomly on the Y position up to minus 128 pixels on top of the screen, outside of our screen. And for each snowflake, we do call the setSnowflake function using the UID of the instance we have just created. So hundred times we create an instance of a snowflake and right away pass that instance through the set snowflake function which is the next function. This function does have a couple of local variables. You can see that it picks the instance snowflake using the UID, the parameter passed into the function which is to say the UID we have just past of our newly created instance. And for each instance, it sets the animation frame to according to the number frames we have in our animation. We set a random size for the object and we set that size so that it's the same width and height so that the image is being proportional. We set the speed of the bullet behavior from a range from 25 to 75, which means that some instances are going to be quite slow, moving only 25 pixels a second, whereas other will be a bit faster, moving 75 pixels a second, and anywhere between this range. We set the magnitude of the sine behavior from 15 to 50, and we set the period of time it's moving along in between 4 seconds and 24 seconds. And finally, we set the angle of motion of the bullet object to 90 degrees, which means the direction down. And finally, we do set a pause Z value for our variable there between 0 and 3, so it, it will return either 0, 1 or 2. We are checking right away after having set those different values. If the animation frame of the snowflake is 3, and just a quick reminder, the 3 there is a, sim a simple cycle. So if it is a 3, I want to set my random size to be smaller than the size. I don't want a, a 55 pixels a cycle. So at best it's going to be 16 pixels from 8 to 16 and I set the size. And that will only apply if the animation frame is 3. And then according to the post Z value we move in front of text wishes, behind characters or behind heel. And that is the system action move to objects that allows us to do this. And you can notice that since it's in the set snowflake function, anytime we are going to set the snowflake, we are going to have a random Z position. And so that happens on very start of our layout. You can notice also that we set the opacity of our characters to zero. And we start a timer, car show, for 2.5 seconds and that will happen only once. We set the opacity of the TXT Mary object and we set the positions, the Y positions of the TXT Wishes object and Heal object to being out of the screen at the very bottom since it's two objects that we are going to rise. You can notice that we do load some JSON string into our array. I load the JSON that I've add out of the Black Hornet Sprite Font Generator. It does 
provide me with a txt file after having set a sprite font out of a font installed on my computer you can notice that I do have a txt object an xml object and when I go into the txt object I do have this section copy the following JSON text and paste it into the array you can select everything and it's actually the very same as this array right there which is more readable for us which means that for the character for example there dollar and euros we have to set the width 36 but thanks to this array there we can automate this thing and finally the audio object is playing our background music and as a sub event for the start of layout we do have a loop for car from 0 to array dot height which is going to be the number of characters of entries into my array and so I loop from 0 to that number and each time we are looping for each character we are setting the txt Mary object character width picking the character set and the width to apply it to thanks to the array and we are actually doing the very same for the txt wishes object reusing our array loading different values into it but setting a loop which is pretty much the same but applying the character width and the character set to the txt wishes object this time on start of layout still we do check if our url does have a from parameter if it doesn't we reckon that we are going to set a default text which is Merry Christmas it still tries to acquire the query parameter 2 but if it doesn't exist it's not a big deal it still displays Merry Christmas dear and the default phrase for the txt wishes is best wishes whereas when there is a from parameter which is the next event we are still setting the Merry Christmas dear according to the query parameter to the same for the wishes best wishes from and the value of the parameter from that ends up our start of layout and so to end up with the snowflakes for each instance that is going outside of the layout at the very bottom we take the instance and set its y position between minus 128 and minus 64 which is on top of the screen and we call the set snowflake so remember the function that sets the animation frame the size the bullet speed as well as the z position so we always have some snowflakes which are coming from the top and which are randomized to a certain extent and that's how we do have this repeating flow of snowflakes and to finish up we are going to see our animation the little elements so remember on start of layout we have modified a few elements we have changed the opacity of the characters so at the very beginning the character is still there but we don't see it same for this text object this one and the hills are beneath the layout here is moving the boolean instance variable moving is set to true on hill by default so it is moving so as long as the hill doesn't have reached yet this point the y position is to be changed thanks to this event there which is checking if the y is less than 720 which happens at some point when it's less than 720 and that it is moving we change the value of the boolean variable to false which will render this event and this event as false and we set the y position to 720 and so it won't move from there from that moment remember as well that we set a timer on start of our layout and so on after two seconds and a half we restart the fade of the characters we do have a fade in time of 1.5 seconds we don't destroy the object and it's not active at start which makes it so that our characters aren't fading in right from the beginning of the execution but 
once we reach this event. And once the fading has finished, we do start the fade for the txt Mary object. And once the txt Mary object has faded in, then we change the value of the boolean instance variable moving of the txt wishes to true. The next event is working and is pretty much the very same that for the heels. We are checking that the txt wishes is moving and is at a greater y position than the ending position. As long as it's in a different position, we move it up. And once it has gone over the ending position, we set it to the ending position we want and we set the movement to false, which will end up us with the falling snowflakes, the txt object there wishing the Merry Christmas for the two parameter in our URL and the best wishes from our from parameter. And so Merry Christmas, dear C2 Academy viewers, best wishes from Katrick. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't hesitate to check out some of the other Construct2 Academy material. Thank you for watching.